What's going on guys? My name is Jason Pike, former U.S. Navy SEAL and Chief Instructor here at Frogman Tactical. Something I'm asked a lot is, what yardage should I zero my rifle? Is it 25 yards, 36, 50? I've even heard 75. All right, 100 or maybe something beyond that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my two favorite zeros based on my opinion that's backed off of science and ballistics. And then we're going to come back and we're going to discuss the ballistics and hopefully it's going to help you make a better decision on where you should zero your rifle. All right guys, just a couple things. I'm going to be running a 10 and a half inch pistol, SB Tactical Brace, Vortex Spark AR Red Dot. This is actually a 2MOA, uh, which means at 2 inch, or excuse me, 100 yards without human error, I should be able to maintain a 2 inch grouping. All right, that's what they guarantee. All right, I'm also going to run supported. It's not about what I can do today. I'm just going to show you the ballistics and why I choose these two uh, zeros. At home, I built a dope book or ballistic chart based on this particular round, all right? And that's going to be important later on um, in our discussion. This is a 55 grain Fiocchi. This particular platform, I always leave it at a 36 yard zero, all right? This is my close quarters platform. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to leave it at a 36 yard zero. That's my primary zero. We're going to take a shot at 100, 200, and 300 and see how we did. I'm going to hold it in the upper thoracic. Um, something I see a lot of shooters do um, that's a mistake is they run their red dot full brightness. Okay, it's great for quick acquisitions for CQB, but if we dim it, it actually removes some of the washout, makes the dot smaller, increases our accuracy, and also it lowers the opacity, meaning I can actually see through my red dot and actually see the target through the red dot instead of a fully bright dot, and I'm trying to center my dot over my target. Three. Let's go see how we did. 36 yard zero on the weapon, 100 yard shot. Again, I'm aiming roughly right in here in the upper thoracic. Here's my impact point. So based on the results and the ballistic chart or dope book that I built, it matches pretty well. So let's go back to 200 and see how we did. 36 yard zero, 200 yard shot. Point of aim is in this area. Point of impact, little low because the bullet drop and human error. However, more than acceptable. Let's go back to 300 and see how it turned out. 36 yard zero, 300 yard shot. Again, I'm aiming or doing my best to aim in the upper thoracic, about an eight inch plate. Here's my impact point. I would say by the ballistic chart that I built and the results that we've seen today, a 36 yard zero is more than acceptable out to 300 yards. Let's go back and we'll work with a, another zero that I'm really fond of. My second favorite zero is a 300 yard. We're already doped in. We're gonna start at 300, work our way back to two, then back to 100, and then go see how we did. You ready? Yep. 300. Send it. Ten. Hit. Two. Send it. Ten. One. Let's go check it out. 300 yard zero, 100 yard shot. I'm doing my best to aim in the upper thoracic. Again, I've got about a two inch leeway. We've got a seven, eight mile an hour wind, which is absolutely not affected at 100 yards. All right. I know this particular round, what my gun can do at 100 yards. So the rise here, the difference is because we have a 300 yard zero, the round is on an incline. So it's gonna impact high, naturally, all right? So more than effective. And we're gonna talk about this here in a little bit. 
Let's go check 200 yards. 200 yards, 300 yards, zero. So ballistically speaking, there should only be about an inch, inch and a half difference from point of aim, point of impact. So again, I'm aiming upper thoracic area, give or take some human error, my two MOA. Right now I have four inches leeway, all right, 200 yards, two MOA, multiply it, you've got four MOA, all right? So more than effective, he's out of the fight. Let's go back to 300 and see how we did. 300 yards, 300 yards, zero. Pretty much point of aim, point of impact. Have no wind right now, so I'm not affected at all. Um, a 300 yard zero works 300 yards, 200 yards, 100 yards, 36 yards, okay? Now let's go back and we'll talk about the ballistics of what happens beyond this 300 yards and this is where we keep that knowledge inside of our head so we can choose what zero works best for us. So we're back from the range. First and foremost, I want to apologize. Um, there's a couple clips where the audio is kind of grainy due to the wind. I was about two hours out before I realized I forgot my external mics. So again, I apologize. During this discussion on the range, you heard me state a couple times that I had built a ballistic chart for that particular round. So I'm not going to get into how to build a ballistic chart, but I want to go over this so you can kind of see visually why I like the 36 and the 300 yard zero over everything else. We've already proved what it can do on the range, but now I want to show you uh, again visually. So horizontally and vertically in the blue outside of the light blue, all right, these are your yardages, 25, 36, 50, 100, 152, 250, 300, and out the 500 here. Diagonally, these are my zero points, meaning I got a 36 yard zero, 25, 50 yard zero, 100 yard zero, 150, 200 yard zero, 250 yard zero, and a 300 yard zero, okay? Everything else inside that is ballistic data. The green is called a high point. Now what a high point is, we're only gonna talk about zero to 300 right now. And then we'll get into the four and 500 here shortly. So if I'm aiming roughly in the sternum between zero and 300 yards with a 36 yard dope in or zero, what is the highest impact point that I should see at any given point, okay? The red is the drop point, just the opposite. Between zero and 300 with whatever dope in or zero I like, what is the lowest, all right, I should see as far as impact within that range, okay, within those distances. So if we go to 36 yards zero, the low point is at 25 yards. The bullet's not dropping here, all right, if I'm aiming here, it's just due to side over bore at this point. So if we start increasing the distance, you're gonna see an increase in the number, meaning inches. We get out to 200 yards, we have a high point of 6.9 inches, meaning again, if I'm aiming here, I should see at 200 yards a 6.9 or seven inch impact point. So point of aim, point of impact, outside of human error, okay? Then the round starts dropping off slightly out to 300 to 4.2 inches, okay? 300 yard zero, once again, at 25 yards, the drop point all right, is 1.2 inches lower, point of aim, point of impact. All right, as we increase the distance, again, you're gonna see an increase or rise in the bullet all the way, once again, out to 200 yards. High points, 4.1 inches. Point of aim, point of impact, 4.1 inches. And then it starts falling off to a 300 yard zero. So up to this point, a 36 yard zero and a 300 yard zero is not that different, okay? Only thing we can say is, you know what, a 300 yard zero is just a couple inches flatter overall, roughly three to be exact for this particular round. All right, so let's go to 36 yard zero, 400 yards, and it's a 5.7 inch drop. So point of aim, point of impact should be roughly six inches. 300 yards zero, let's go to 400 yards. And now we've got 11.3 inch drop. We've almost doubled the drop from a 36 yard zero to a 300 at the 400 yard mark. Meaning, if I aim here, 11, 11 and a half inches. So is this still acceptable on a human body? 
Absolutely. So this is a deciding factor for me right here at the 500 yard marker why I really like the 36 and second becomes the 300. All right, if we go to 36 yard zero out to 500 yards, it's 25.2 inch drop. One simple number to remember at 500 yards. Everything beyond that is another animal. 12 inches, 12 inches over the head. We had another 12 inches, a ruler plus another, that's 24 inches, 1.2. Gives you 25.2, where are we at? Right where we wanna be. We come over here to the 300 yard, zero, 500 yard, 32.2 inch drop, okay? Now, I can still say I'm gonna hold 12 inches over, all right, 24, and then we add another one, 36 or 32, so we're gonna hit in the abdomen area, okay? Still more than effective. What a lot of people do is they want to focus on headshots, so they want to focus on the upper thoracic, okay, which is fine. The problem here is, all right, I'm guesstimating what 12 inches looks like at 500 yards. So I don't want to get any further away from my target than necessary in my holdover. The further away I get, so if I say I want to go 15 or 20 inches to try to get in the upper thoracic instead of just focusing on that 12 inches and accepting this, well, there's more room for error. You're not gonna be as accurate on your guesstimation and there's a, you're more likely to miss overall, just um, throwing the round completely, all right? So let's look at a 25 yard zero. Some people like a 25 yard zero, all right? 25 yard zero, the bullet's climbing. All right, 100 yards, we're already 7.5 inches high. 150, 11.2. 200, 13.7, 250, 14.8, 14.8 inches. So once again, if you build a muscle memory to aim up here 14, 15 inches, you know, you're decreasing your target size. And we don't want to do that, okay? Combatively, we don't want to do that. You got enough stuff to worry about than sitting here trying to, I need a headshot, or I need this perfect little upper thoracic. It doesn't work like that in combat, all right? Now here's a good thing, 25 yards zero at 400 yards, we only have basically an eight inch high point. At 500 yards, we've only got an 8.5 inch drop point. So more than acceptable. The issue becomes between 150, 200, 250, and 300. There's a lot of room for error there. That's four distances that we have to worry about, all right? Let's go to 100 yards zero. All right, what you'll see at 100 yards and 150, the bullet is flattening out. And then it starts dropping off. The reason why that is, is the average, typical 223 or 556, five, it starts flattening out between 97 yards and 123 yards, depending on the overall ballistics and you know the coefficient, how much pressure it has, velocity and all that stuff, okay? The great thing about it, at 300 yards, we're only eight inch drop. Now, because we baselined, all right, at 100 and 150, gravity is gonna pull that round down very quickly. And we can see that out at 400 yards. So if we go to that 36 yard zero, it's 5.7 inch drop, all the way to 13 or 14 inch drop, or excuse me, I'm sorry, a 22 inch drop at 100 yard dope in. All right. So, Nothing says I can't say, you know what, I'm going to hold 12 inches over the head and I'm going to hit where I want to. The problem comes in when we get out to 500. It's dropping so fast within 100 yards, it doubles. Goes to 45.6 inch drop. And it just goes from there, okay? I would stick with a 36 yard zero or a 300 yard zero. A lot of people like to zero at 100, all right? And here's the reality. You can take all this information that I'm giving you and say, you know what, I want a 36 yard zero. I want a 100 yard zero or a 300 yard zero. The question is not where you want a zero, but can you hit the target out at 500 yards? Your zero is irrelevant um, without the proper training. And I can tell you this from experience in teaching out the last 15 years, I've seen people come with 10 to $15,000 rifles 
who had their scopes on backwards. They had them canted. They had no idea how to lock and load. I know that sounds silly, but it's a basic. It's no different than trigger manipulation. It's no different than a proper cheek weld. And this is where the concept of slow is smooth, smooth is fast comes from. All right? We see throughout social media a lot, guys who are trying to be professionals and they're trying to go fast, they end up shooting themselves. Well, then they come back and they do a video. Well, it was my holster. It hung up. I had a new holster. I got a new gun. And there's no accountability. No, you try to do something you're incapable of instead of starting at the basics. All right. So it's no different than trying to use this data without all the basic fundamentals of long range shooting. It's not going to do you any good. You can have all of this knowledge built in and the energy and ballistics of a particular round, but if you can't get behind the gun and pull the trigger and hit a target at 300 yards, 500 yards, 700 yards, what good are you? You're not. So remember this, knowledge without application is useless. There are so many people out there who actually have the knowledge, but if you put them behind all right, the gun with that knowledge, they can't apply it. All right, so that's foolishness actually. All right, if I have the knowledge and I can't apply it or don't apply it, it's called being a fool. A person who's wise is a person not only has a knowledge, but has the ability and applies it. So um, I hope you guys like the video. Please uh, subscribe, like, and share. And I hope you have a great night and God bless. So now we're going to reach out and touch someone. All right, we've got a three power magnifier, another vortex optic red dot. We're going to reach out to 700. Human size silhouette to see how we do. Ready? It, baby first shot all right so we've got a quarter value wind about seven eight mile per hour so I'm holding about two and a half foot at the one o'clock different platform different length barrel a little nicer setup when we're trying to reach out and touch someone they state the maximum effective range for a 5.56 five, or 223 is about 300 yards. I would not want to get hit at 700 yards with one of these. It will incapacitate you. And if it hits you in the neck and artery head, it will kill you. All right.